Peter was researching something the other day, and one of our one of our videos that was uh, me on TechWiki, like teaching something, was in the thread. Oh, that's cool. Of like the person teaching something to Peter, and I was like, "This is nuts." <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Hey, welcome to the WAN Show, guys. We've got a great show for you today, I yeah. hope. Yeah. I actually haven't seen this guy in like a month, three weeks, something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. He's been yeah. like cavorting about in Asia. Yeah. Perfectly innocent, though. Yeah. No weird kinds of tourism. <laughs> it was Taiwan, not yeah, not not Thailand. <laughs> Taiwan. Um, Anyways, let's roll the intro. <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> oh. oh man. Um, this is not gonna be a good show. <laughs> we are off to a real rough, rough start here. Yeah. 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 But that's okay because it's not about how you start, it's about the big finish. <laughs> Would you believe I'm trying to hire a new writing staff? Would you believe that? Is, is like part of the process, like how many dick jokes you can come up with oh, in, during the interview? No, no, definitely not. There's, there are bonus points for saying that they think I'm funny, though. Only one oh, okay. person did it today. So, um, you know, I want to commend that Sounds one like individual one on their hired. honesty. Oh, yes. Yeah, I want to commend them on their honesty because yeah. everyone else... They're like closet thinking I'm funny because yeah. I know everyone thinks I'm funny. Of course. Yeah, not so much. All right, fine, fair. That's fine. Yeah, no, I'm actually finally um, finishing up the writer search that I started four months ago or something like that. I've been traveling so much that I just have not had time to do it properly. And I would rather just have it take too long and go through everyone fairly versus, you know, trying to spread it out over... Um, you know, many weeks, and then like the people that I evaluated at the beginning, maybe I'm not using the same standards as the one at the end. Like I wanted to be able to sit down and like do it in big chunks. Um, and so we've uh, started our interviews. We're not quite done interviews yet, but um, we're looking to make a decision pretty soon. So we're going to be increasing the writing size, writing team size here by like forty percent, sixty percent. I don't and know. How many whatever. people are you hire? Math is not a strong point. Two to three. Oh wow. I thought this was one position. Yeah, no. Holy cow. Yeah, two to three. Are you that I've hmm, are you expanding channels? Because that's a lot of writers to add on. So we haven't talked about anything yet. Okay. But um, actually, so you don't attend Linus Media Group Monday morning meetings anymore because no. you are not an employee of Linus I Media Group. I still get the Group. emails and I poke through them sometimes just to make sure yeah. like the power isn't going to go out or something without so me knowing. I, I, gave, I actually gave like a big, a big speech on Monday. So I was, uh, I was talking about, um, or wait, should we talk about some of the topics we're going to have today or should I just get right in? You know what, I'll, I'll get right into this. We'll talk about topics in a minute. Yeah, um, this is pretty on point. So I was talking about um, some of the changes that have been taking place on YouTube lately and how they've affected our yeah. channels. Yeah, yeah, um, You know, YouTube won't admit anything. Um, I've had Ever. I've had correspondence with them, not just with my partner manager, who is quite a senior member of the team and who I, I, I believe when he tells me, you know, nothing changes or nothing has changed or that it's machine learning and nothing discrete was changed, but that doesn't mean that it isn't always learning and always changing. Um, and I've even gone higher up the food chain than that. Um, and everyone insists we didn't change anything. We tweaked no dials, but I just, I, I have a hard time, I have a hard time buying it because we know from the other things that YouTube says, like I went to Brandcast and YouTube's talking about, um, you know, uh, um, raising authoritative voices when it comes to trying to make sure that they're a platform that promotes credible information. But can you raise an authoritative voice without suppressing yeah. another one? You're saying, yes, you can. No, I'm agreeing with you. Ah, I see. Yeah. Because no, you can't. Yeah. You, you can't elevate something without pushing something else down. That's just the way it works. At Especially when, sorry to jump in here for yeah. a second, but YouTube kind of at this point, like, has the population. Like, they don't really have a ton of expanding more to do other than people getting internet, 
or yep. people getting to the age where they can watch their own YouTube. Fun content. fact, they're no longer going to report on unique, uh, unique visitor increases anymore. Interesting. Do you know why? Because they're already over 2 billion <laughs> a month. <laughs> oh my God. So like- Yeah, so like who so do you go for now? Nothing that they yeah. can do can sound impressive and sound like growth to their shareholders anymore. Yeah. So they're just like- Because they have everyone. We're doing great. We're just like, we can't talk about it anymore though because like a 0.1% improvement, in fairness to us, it's still 20 it's million still more huge. people, but it's like not impressive. Doesn't sound very marketable. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. So like, if you're if you're taking this platform that like, yes, it's expanding. Don't get me wrong here. I understand yeah. that. But if you're taking this platform that has like this kind of set amount of users, if you're, I understand it's not how it works. Just hold on. Um, if you start pumping someone, you have to reduce push for other people. There's only so many eyeballs and you know there's been problems on YouTube we understand there's more eyeballs all the time that have been identified uh, like the black hole thing with conspiracy theories or you know, flat earth or fake moon landing or anti-vaxxing or whatever else you know there's there's things that are relatively low-hanging fruit um, that hold on a second one moment please <laughs> um, technical difficulties <laughs> I'm just checking to see if, uh, okay, cool. So in February, YouTube demonetized anti-vax channels. Uh, Facebook, YouTube to suppress anti-vaxxer content. This was from PC Mag in March 7th. Good, so there's other sources, so I don't have to be the source for this. So YouTube is suppressing anti-vax content. Um, now, so there's- Oh no. So there's certain things that I completely agree with because that's <laughs> incredibly dangerous. Um, anti-vax content, not suppressing it because anti-vax content is super stupid. Um, so there's things that I agree with, but there's also potential collateral damage. So one of the problems that was identified on social media in general, not just on YouTube, is that once you watch, like if you go, okay, for lols, you know, you want, you show a friend some stupid Ty Lopez video because you're like, that guy, you know, the guy with the knowledge, the you know, garage. remember that guy? And they're like, no, no, I'm like, this guy, all of a sudden, you're, you're recommended, your ads, it's just full of all those bloody get rich quick YouTube yeah. gurus. Yeah. And it's so obnoxious. Okay, so there's this problem that's been identified in online, on social media in general, with echo chambers. And with one search for a given topic, all of a sudden, just putting You might it, slightly be interested in this. Yeah. yeah, or not just interested even, just curious and all of a sudden it's it's put in front of your face and when you're when you're not as media savvy you might just see something on facebook and go oh oh it's credible it's printed in black and white like it's it, it's the craziest thing in the world but that same just because something is printed in the in black and white doesn't mean that it's true that same education that's been trying that people have been trying to to give to people since Freaking 1800s is still a big deal today, and so so what happens is you end up in this in this kind of this death spiral of fake moon landing, flat Earth, whatever, just from watching one stupid video. And a lot of the people that perpetuate these conspiracy theories speak in a way that may not sound authoritative to you, the educated viewer, but to other people apparently does. So. Anyway, one of the well, theories... Well, it, it, it might sound yeah. a th it might not sound believable, but they're trying to be authoritative, mm -hmm. almost always. So, like, exactly. it, it makes sense that it might sound that way. Exactly. That's the intent. So, so one of the theories we had was that in order to prevent, um, you know, these kinds of of echo chambery things from happening, YouTube might have been de-emphasizing um, more niche content and then pumping stuff that's safer. Now, that was the theory. And we were kind of like, oh, well, we're tech. We're kind of niche. We're also a niche within tech. Like, quite frankly, a lot of the content that we upload would have absolutely no place on a, a, a more mainstream tech content channel like, yeah. like Marquez's. Like, yeah. come on. It wouldn't make sense for him to do. His audience wouldn't like it. And it, it makes sense that it goes up on our channel, gets fewer views, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we were looking at it going, okay, well maybe part of this is we're just more niche 
And so people, because we noticed the biggest dip in viewership was on our back catalog. Yeah. So maybe what's happening is instead of people watching one of our new videos and then getting bombarded with our massive back catalog of 4,000 videos, something that had a huge benefit for us and generated a lot of subscribers, maybe instead of that, well, they're being fed some Marquez and some Austin and some Gamers Nexus and whatever else. And to be clear, we love all those guys and that's cool, fine, whatever. But it definitely did have an impact on our viewership over the course of this year. So from there, I actually had some really great conversations at the YouTuber, YouTube Creator Summit and um, Derek from Veritasium posted a great video. Did you watch that by yeah, the way? I yeah, did. yeah. Posted a great video on his theory about why his shade ball video went viral. And um, basically his theory, it's funny because I, in some ways I give YouTube like so much credit like the, like the puppet masters or have all these different strings they're pulling on. His theory was so simple that I forget whose razor it is where the simplest solution is. Ocom? Is that Occam's razor? I think so. Anyway. Or Occam, yes. Yeah, yeah, the simplest solution is usually the correct one. His theory was as simple as YouTube has taken the, um, the, the click-through yeah. ratio that you get with, your, with the, the, the clickiness of your title and thumbnail and it has shifted the axis so that a smaller difference in click-through ratio gives it a greater proportion, more promotion on the site, and then a small difference the other way gives you way less. So instead of it being kind of linear, if your click-through ratio is great, you're like way up here. And if your click-through ratio sucks, you're like way down here. Um, so that was another interesting theory because we have also had our click-through ratio decrease this year as we've moved away from more clickbaity titles and clickbaity thumbnails, which sucks, but it's something that we've committed to our audience that we're gonna do. It just means that we'd really appreciate if you guys clicked the bell yeah. and then watch the video right away. Yeah. That actually makes a huge difference. Even if you're not gonna actually watch it right now, if you drop what you're doing, Start the video, put your phone back in your pocket. I don't care. But if you just just click and just, just go about the rest of your day, go watch it later, doesn't matter. That initial click-through ratio basically determines everything about how that video is gonna perform. As far as we can tell, that's Derek's theory and it's so simple, it might just be right. Yeah. So anyway, LTT has actually struggled in terms of viewership this year. It's actually, it's back up in the last four to six weeks or so, and we are tracking a really good direction right now. But coming back to our all hands meeting this Monday, this was a very, very long story. Wow, we're 12 minutes in. Um, coming I'm, back to, I'm engaged right now. Coming back to our all hands meeting this Monday, I actually did stand up in front of everyone. You know when I stand up during the Monday morning meeting, there's usually- it's a little serious. Good news, everyone. Yeah. Um, I basically went, look, this is something that I've really struggled with, not just um, professionally, but also personally, you know, trying to figure out what am I doing? What am I doing wrong? What can I do to fix it? Um, does the audience just plain not like me anymore? Um, is, is, is PC hardware losing its sex appeal? Like I was trying to identify what it was because unless I know what the problem is, I cannot fix it. And um, what I, ultimately came to was that there was a combination of audience sentiment things that did need to be addressed, you know, talking to the audience directly about things like doing less offensive thumbnails and titles, that kind of thing, you know, making sure we're appending the, the, the brand and the product, wherever that makes sense, things like that. I thought that was part of it. I also thought that some kind of change, whether a manual change or an algorithmic change on YouTube side was part of the problem. And then the bigger conclusion that I came to is that maybe if we build our business correctly, it just doesn't matter. Because where LTT has struggled this year, TechLinked yeah. has actually picked up nearly all of the lost watch time, nearly all of the lost viewership and lost revenue. And I kind of went, well, TechLinked was an accident. After the failure of Channel Superfund, and uh, a bit of a stagnation period that we went through with TechWiki. To be clear, TechWiki's going really well right now. Uh, so massive shout out to John and Dennis. Yay. Um, uh, so after kind of a stagnation period for TechWiki, I was full like triple down mode on LTT. I was like, okay, we just throw all the, re LTT has literally 10 times as much staff 
as any other channel, even now. Um, but what I realized is if I can't ultimately control it, well, something that I can control is this diversification strategy. So TechLink happened by accident. My homeboy Riley lost his job because his company went out of business. And I was like, yo, dog, I've been trying to hire you forever, you twit. Get out of the dumpster. Get get out of the dumpster. Get, get, Come on. Get, get on Come over on. here. And, you know, Riley, he's driven to do the tech news. I think we all know this. He's driven to, 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 to do the tech news for the people. Um, so, so we created TechLinked. And TechLinked was a, an accidental, complete success. Like, that channel is freaking awesome. I get my tech news from TechLinked. Like, it's awesome. You get your tech news from <laughs> Nice. I genuinely watch it all the time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just, like, yeah, it's great. And clearly a lot of people do. TechLinked regularly gets half a million views a video, even though it only has like 700, 800,000 subscribers. Like, it's outstanding. Yeah. It's such a great show. Um, anyway. So I was looking at it going, well, maybe we're, just, maybe we're just thinking about this too narrowly. Maybe the answer here is to broaden the net instead. Because that way, every time TechLinked struggles a little bit and you know, needs, a, needs a, a, fresh, a fresh coat of lipstick, or you know, every time LTT loses its, its groove, or every time TechQuickie runs out of things people need explained, as if that'll ever happen. <laughs> Something else can carry some of that weight and we can spread things out. The other really cool thing about TechLinked is that it doesn't rely on me. Yeah. At the beginning of TechLinked, I was far and away the top performing host on that channel in terms of the views that each video would get. Like of the top 10, I was all but one of them. And then of the bottom 10, I wasn't in any of them. Like I was clearly, my face was driving more clicks. Really interesting fact, over the last couple of months, I've actually been on the bottom half. Which I think is great. That is. Because yeah. it means that Riley and James, and I mean, we've had Dennis host, we've had uh, Alex host, Yvonne. we've had Yvonne host. <laughs> it, means, cool. it means that people are connecting with the team and with the brand, not just Linus Sebastian, the person who quite honestly can't do everything forever. And so I was, so, so basically, I had this, um, this sort of magic moment where I went, Okay, LTT is starting to recover, which is good. <laughs> we can hire. Um, <laughs> dodge a bullet there. Uh, but also, maybe it's not the future. Maybe it's just one part of the future, and we can, we can bring people more types of tech content that bring them happiness in other you know, tech ways. And that's been one of the great things about the channels that you guys have expanded, is like if you liked Linus Tech Tips and you don't want an education channel or a news channel, or a channel of us playing with weird toys and being very cringy, you could just keep watching Alliance Tech Tips. It didn't matter. Alliance Tech Tips will, as far as I can tell, carry on just as well as it has, and other channels will keep carrying on, and you're maybe expanding. What are you expanding to? Are you saying at this point? I don't know. So it okay. was really interesting because normally when you enter the hiring process, you know, you might go in and say, uh, you know, I really want someone with um, JavaScript experience or whatever. Okay. You you set out what your your job requirements are. Yeah. Um, well, I am just looking at all my applicants, and I'm figuring out what who can the I do with this person. Best applicants are, and then I will I will create programming. It's actually there's some a little bit larger companies than Flowplane uh, that do this in a lot of different spaces. You try to find people that are extremely talented and passionate and you go like, Welp, I'll make you super valuable. Let's go. Uh, it's it's uh, actually, if you can manage it, it's a very apparently cool way to do things. So not necessarily just the new people, but there's people who are already here that the new people could come mm. and alleviate some of their workload yeah. and maybe they could pursue a passion project. Uh, James and Riley have been really into Talk linked. Do you know Talk linked? Yeah. Okay. Totally different from Tech linked because it's just one topic instead of many topics, and it's long instead of short. Yeah. Um, and honestly, the last, the first episode, kind of rough. The second episode, a lot better. And the I was I happened to eavesdrop on sort of a, a, a debrief conversation and they had identified basically everything that they needed to fix and they're like they're iterating and they're they're going through that creative process and I'm looking at it going like wow like this is great this is me witnessing the machine 
working. working. Yeah. Um, and but they don't have time. Right. So James has produced, I think, four LTTs in the last two weeks because Jake's been on vacation. Um, Anthony's been tied up preparing some of our really cool boots that we're going to have for LTX. He's got 10 years of PC gaming. He has 10 gaming rigs to configure, build, and benchmark and set up demos on. Like, <laughs> uh. so he's been super busy. Um, Alex has been tied up. He's actually putting together our like maker space next door yeah. right now. Yeah. Like, so James, we've been leaning on him really heavily, but that means he hasn't had a ton of time for Talkland. Um, so, you know, we could bring these new people in. They could lift some of that load and then we can kind of spread things out. We can figure out what makes sense. I mean, Make as long- each person a little bit more agile. As long as we keep a really great team dynamic here and as long as we stay passionate about tech, whether it's news, you know, news is important, Riley. Whether it's news or whether it's something else, um, yeah, uh, I, I guess yeah, we're 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 gonna we're gonna do more stuff though. You know, I'm 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 not done yet. <laughs> cool. You know, I was thinking about it, not thinking about actually quitting, but thinking about phasing myself out. Um, you know, it's you've been sort of talking about it for a while. Yep, I, I was I was really thinking about it. I mean, you and I chatted about it back at CES, I think. Um, and I've just been kind of considering whether like whether I'm done, um, you know, and when the when the channel's not performing well, because at the end of the day, it's not up to me. It's it's not up to you. It's not up to the rest of my staff. Like, you know, everyone here could go, oh, no, Linus, you know, we really want you to keep being the face of the company and the face of the channel. And I'd go, well, yeah, that's great. But if the audience doesn't want it, then, like, it's a nice sentiment, but it actually doesn't matter you at could, all. You could pivot to, uh, hear me out. You could pivot to, like, <laughs> vlogs of you oh. doing, hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not saying daily vlogs or anything. Just... What, am I going to be a family vlogger now? No, that actually isn't where I was going to go with it. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> you really enjoyed your, like, RC car hacking electronic stuff. Yeah. The gun's going a little bit further away. Um, <laughs> just, like, you experimenting with technologies in ways that you actually want to. And just, like, fumbling around and trying different things. Yeah. Instead of trying to go with this, like, hyper-entertainment or hyper... So we've done a bit more of that lately. or whatever. I know, Yeah. but having a little bit even more freeform and being like off the line of Sectives channel. So it could be like pretty separated if you wanted okay. to. Here's one problem with that. At 4,000 videos in, I've run most of the experiments that That's I was kind of like wondering about when That's I was in fair. high school. Yeah, yeah. I have so much more resources now than I used to. You know, one of the things I really struggle with right now is just, um, having too much resources. Like, people got mad when I upgraded my gaming rig. So there's a couple problems. One is that people don't think critically sometimes, so they were like, why are you calling a Titan graphics card slow? So the thing is, depending on what generation of Titan is, <laughs> it is, it could be really slow by today's standards. It is. <laughs> it could be literally the fastest card on the market, all the way down to slower than literally anything that NVIDIA currently sells. <laughs> <laughs> like. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, you've got people that are frustrated because for me, upgrading my personal rig is as simple as showing up at NVIDIA for a sponsored project of all things and saying that I've been finally finding time to play games lately, um, but Anno 1800 is like slow. chugging on my system and them just being like, what? I'll put a graphics card in the mail. People, people get mad about that. And I get it, but the flip side of it is... Um, the alternative, I guess, is for me to just not tell you. Yeah. Because you could be an influencer one twentieth my size. And I use the term influencer as like the I word. Um, so let's say an online content creator, literally one twentieth my size. And getting something like a graphics card sent to you is easy. I mean, even when we started Linus Tech Tips, we had 200,000 subscribers. Yeah. And one of the first videos that Luke worked on when we went indie was our review of the first <laughs> GTX Titan. Yeah. Like, it, it's not like this is new. So the only... So if you're going to get mad at me about it, you're well within your rights. But just understand that anyone else out there who is not telling you that they got sampled a card for, complete, for doing a project or whatever the case may be, 
is probably just not telling you. There are exceptions, but we believe in transparency, if nothing else. Also, it's not for my personal rig. It's for a video. There you have it. So there's your full disclosure. Hey guys, I'm working on my personal rig. This video was sent, or this video card was sent over by NVIDIA. This motherboard was sent over by Gigabyte. That's it. We are, we are fulfilling our obligation. And so if you want me to just say, hey, I'm working on my personal rig, here's the parts I'm using, I could do that, but I just don't, I don't think that's good enough. And not just I don't think that's good enough, the FCC doesn't think that's good enough. So, I mean, they don't have any right. jurisdiction here gonna, yeah. at all. And so- But it's, it's a good idea to- I, I could just not. But for my part, I would rather take a little bit of negativity and uh, just deal with it. And there's people that are going to be resentful, but I guess my response to them would be, um, you know, where's your channel? Where's your investment in building something so that people want you to show their products on it? Like, I'm not saying that anyone can be a YouTuber. I'm just saying that you literally won't know unless you're like really trying to do it. Give it a shot. And then should people be, should people resent you if someone sends you a graphics card? I don't know. Have you, have you heard Taylor Swift's new song? I haven't. Oh boy. Do I sound like her? Please don't tell me I sound no, like her. No, actually. I'm, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> that actually ties in really well to what I would say right there is the title of the song is you need to calm down. You're being too, or, and then a part of the lyrics is like, you need to calm down. You're being too loud. And the whole thing is just like, leave it alone. And this is, I think, one of those kind of situations where, like, he's he's telling you, I, I I have seen a lot of creators do a lot worse things, where they hide it or there's something going on in the background yeah. and they're not communicating that stuff. Him saying, like, hey, they sent me this card doesn't mean go buy this card, it's the best one. No, and I didn't say that. No. I have never recommended a Titan to anyone. No. <laughs> NVIDIA knows that. They still sent it. Yeah. It means, hey, I got this card. I might as well use it. It's going to fulfill all the things I really care about. Sweet. Dunk. It's literally the fastest card, so. Cool. Put it in. I don't know. And people are all over the map, because on the one hand, you've got people mad that I'm putting in an RTX Titan. And then on the other hand, you've got people mad that, like, <laughs> what kind of tech influencer are you? You're not even running SLI. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you've got too many people in your audience at a certain point. Yeah. Like you like, can't please everyone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, this shirt is kind of pleasing, though. We should probably do ad spots. Oh right, yeah. and surely you mean sponsor spots. Oh right. Oh. Because our sponsor integrations and placements yes. surely do not compete with YouTube's ad formats. Yep. We should do a WAN show on that at some point. Why we have to call everything sponsored. That would be awesome. Just kind of some inside baseball for you ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah. Ridge Wallet. Yeah. Hey, where's the Ridge Wallet? They didn't give us a Ridge Wallet to talk about. Uh, they might have been hoping mine would be here. Oh, shoot. But honestly, Did we screw straight up? up. Hey, Jake. Jake Daly drives one. Is Brandon getting one? Hey! hey! Brandon Whoa. saves the day! Heck yeah. Thanks, Brandon. So the reason why I don't have mine on me is because uh, I was traveling. You didn't lose it, did you? And I lose my stuff way too often, and I didn't want to lose it. Oh, all right. That is why. I actually believe, see... This is why he said that, because it's happened multiple times. I you. He lost the first phone that he yep. ever earned as an influencer. And I'm going to use the word earned, because you don't become an influencer by accident. He left it on a plane. <laughs> it was an LG G3? G3. G3. That uh, still haunts me to you this day. You dork. So, <laughs> stop carrying pointless items around <sighs> in your pockets, like receipts, old hotel room keys, or spent gift cards. The Ridge Wallet is designed to help you carry less. It uses two metal plates that are bound by a strong elastic band, keeping all your cards tightly together, but still easily accessible. It's RFID blocking, and it's lifetime guaranteed. It comes in different types of metal, like aluminum, titanium, and carbon fiber, which is not a type of metal, but chill. And you can use offer code <laughs> LTT to save 10% on a Ridge Wallet at ridgewallet.com slash LTT. Oh, you want to hit me with a carbon fiber? Woo! It's lighter. <laughs> Go freaking figure! Who would have thunk such a thing? Wow. 
Uh, also up for today's like show is Savage Le Jerky. Where's my maple buffalo bacon? You can pick between these two, Ooh. and I am salivating already. Oh. Savage Jerky was made by a group of friends that were tired of the same mediocre jerky. They yeah. wanted a snack that was flavorful, spicy, and something that you wouldn't regret eating later. They've got 13 different flavors of jerky, like moho, ghost pepper buffalo, and my favorite, Maple buffalo bacon. You might you might regret might regret uh -huh. uh, you might regret uh, you know ghost pepper buffalo a little bit partially. You won't regret the flavor. Mm -hmm. You might regret what it does to you. Mm -mm. You might regret what it does to your toilet. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, it's yummy. Uh -huh. uh, and they don't just sell jerky. Mm. You can try out their hot sauces. Mm. I haven't tried the mojo habanero one that I'm holding up right now, but the ghost pepper one is. Or the Carolina Reaper one, that's the one I have. It's so good. I really, I haven't tried this sauce, but I really like this jerky, so it's probably good. Um, they've also got their uh, barbecue sauces, and they've even got a spice rub that goes great on anything. They've got a promo on right now, buy three bags of jerky and get one free. Heck yeah. So check it out at lmg.gg slash savage jerky. Finally, we got this plate. Boom! How do you like that LTX display? Yeah. Oh, pull, pull it off, pull it off. That's how easy it is to mount a display. Mm. Make your walls look awesome with display. The posters are made out of metal. They're three millimeters thick. They've got bent edges so that you won't cut yourself. They use a magnetic wall mounting system and they've got 15,000 artists who have contributed to over 260,000 different designs. Each display sold gets 10 trees planted. They offer hassle-free oh. returns. They're already gift packed and with the code LTT, you can save 15 Percent. So just head to lmg.gg slash displate when. Oh, and apparently these, oh. these are for sale. Oh. Honestly, these are really sharp. That's cool. These are like, yeah, these are pretty cool. You know how people used to get those metal car signs in their garage? Metal tech signs in your computer room or right? where you have your computer. Perfect. That's cool. Yeah. This one made me like a tiny bit sad. Because you're not on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I checked. Yeah. I was curious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Why don't we talk about... Do you have a tech topic? Um, yeah, why don't we talk about the 64-core Threadripper? Yes. So this is a rumor right now, rumor status. Uh, this was posted by Clueless Gamer on the forum. It's definitely a rumor, WCCF Tech. They claim AMD is working on a 64-core, 128-thread Threadripper part for launch in Q4 of 2019. Now, this was something that <clears throat> was very recently rumored to be going away altogether. Threadripper was like on AMD's roadmap, and then it was like- And then kind of off. Not on it. Yeah. And then now there's a rumor that we're still gonna have it. I'm gonna say something unpopular. Ooh. I don't think this skew makes any sense. I think AMD has such a strong end. I am, take everything I'm saying as a rumor. And the reason for that is that we haven't actually seen third gen Ryzen performance yet. Yeah. So I am. Oh, we're coming back to this. I am assuming based oh on AMD's numbers that they have provided that they are not <sighs> lying. Yeah. And that third gen riser kicks ass. Riser. Did I say riser? Riser. Ryzen, sorry. <laughs> All right, so I am assuming that they are not bull crapping around. I kind of like riser. Right. Okay. Someone should make a riser product line. All right, enough. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Here, just twist a little. Go ahead, <laughs> take it. Oh, Ugh. thanks. Yeah. Looked like a nipple pinch or something. <laughs> anyway. Maybe it was. Um, so I'm, I'm going based on that third gen Ryzen is gonna be awesome. So. Here's my, here's my counter to Threadripper pitch. You already have 32 core Threadripper, okay? That already exists. On the Ryzen third gen mainstream platform, you are already going to have a 16 core 32 thread chip. I would, I would postulate that for the vast majority of workloads, that is already more than enough. And I realize I'm changing my tune a lot because back when Intel was determined to keep quad core the maximum for mainstream forever, I was like, yo, where's my cores? For mainstream, I absolutely think so. For some 
scenarios where you're trying to build out like serverless clouds and stuff by epic yeah i just it feels completely unnecessary because ryzen whatever it is 30 90 something what's the something, future of their X, epic what's uh, the future of the epic processors 30 mm, what no epic is uh epic is going to be on their so zen 2 epic is going to be called rome Oh, okay. It's coming. Okay. Very okay. soon. Okay, okay. So, I could still see them doing Threadripper as a 2024 32 lineup or something like that. But that's three SKUs. It's hard to say if it's worth maintaining a completely separate socket and chipset platform for it. Um, because it's already like it's like it's it's so niche the only reason i could think of to do it would be to just put the screws to intel but even yeah. then it's totally unnecessary like we I think already, already kind of have intel isn't going to have anything to compete with even a 32 core thread ripper within the next 18 months as far as i can tell yeah so this is just when do we get to the point where we're honestly just giving up too much of our single threaded clock speed for the sake of having more cores and if we really need 64 cores, why aren't we just getting an Epic? There is very, very little that I can think of, even for a workstation workload that needs 64 CPU cores. I hadn't heard the Rome. You called it Rome? Rome. Like R-O-M-E? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I hadn't heard the Rome news, so it sort of made sense to me. Is there specs out for what Rome will be? Up to 64 cores. So basically, okay. they're just repurposing Rome yeah. as a workstation product, which... Yeah. I mean, I guess if you're building the damn thing anyway, okay. Maybe if it's easy. Doesn't make it, yeah. The thing about know. Threadripper, though, is it's overclockable. I don't know that I would recommend overclocking a 64-core yeah. processor. So it just feels like the, the product without a customer. Because you're either a little bit lower than it, probably, or a little bit higher than it, probably. There's, there's, it's fairly unlikely you'll be right on. So if I'm AMD, and there's any truth to... It would be fun. The rumors here, yeah. So, okay. If this isn't about building a practical product, yeah. and you don't actually care if anybody buys it, yeah. here's what's going to happen. Based on what we know, or what we're taking AMD's word for, so far with third gen Ryzen, it should have excellent performance per watt. The sustained clock speeds that it can hit should be pretty decent, even with high core counts. And its IPC improvements over last gen Zen are looking pretty good. Yeah. So with all of that in mind, Intel's highest end, and like, it's like full desperation move, that W series 28 core Xeon, that the overclockable one on, that you can put on, there's like three motherboards that exist for it yeah. or whatever. <laughs> um, so, so Intel's best possible response without bringing back like skull trail dual socket overclockable systems is 28 cores cool. so what we know then is that if amd goes 32 core which is what they currently have and what they could easily and comfortably do with the next gen thread ripper they will probably beat that processor by a little so when you're looking at the like review the the halo product versus the halo product amd might be on top but like by a bit, and it might depend on if it's like an AVX 512 enabled workload or whatever. If AMD releases a 64 core processor, they know that for the first time uh, ever, no, no, they beat Intel to they dual beat core. Them last time. They beat yeah. them to dual core. So for the first time in over 10 years, they know that they will not just beat Intel at the top of the benchmark leaderboards, they will absolutely fucking destroy them. Pardon my French. Sorry. We don't sorry. have the button. Yeah, I need the button. Ah. Like, we're talking... There will be benchmark graphs where people are showing, you know, video encoding in FFmpeg or Cinebench where AMD literally is outperforming Intel by a factor of two. Yeah. That's the only reason that I can think of for them to do it. It sounds fun. And with how, like, successful they've been for the last little while, maybe that type of fun is becoming worth it. 
where like the uh, the the last round of processors from AMD, I would not have necessarily said the same thing. Well, now that they're selling anything at a profit, they actually have some money That's what to I mean. play with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that helps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's cool though. I, I don't know. I've I've been very happy with all this AMD stuff, um, and with constant security vulnerability problems coming from Intel, um, it's it's a uh, it's good time over in that camp. So the rumor is that um, it would be socket compatible with existing TR4 motherboards after a BIOS update. Um, it, there's speculation that it's probably a 14 nanometer part. Um, there we're expecting it to be priced in the $2,500 to $3,000 range. Um, and they're aiming for mid Q4 2019 because they have something planned for CES next year, or at the very latest January 2020. Um, actually, I don't even know if these are Zen 2 cores, which is interesting, because if they're not seven nanometer, they wouldn't be, as far as I know. Uh, forgive me for not having all the details about this rumored Rumor. product, yeah. but uh, we'll, see. we'll see how it goes. Either way, the only way that I could see this making any sense for AMD is just as a gigantic FU. Which is fun. Which is fun. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Speaking of fun, Xbox Scarlet announced. You want to talk about this one? Uh, yeah, sure. This is awesome, by the way. And if you're in the computer space and you're like, no, consoles suck. No, it's awesome. Shut up. Because every time new, really awesome consoles come out, everything steps up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because developers are going to be making for compatibility across the platform, and you want this. This is good for you. This is very good for you. Also, consoles are basically computers now. Yes, extremely much so. So ports don't suck so hard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, it's, it's great. It's actually, it's fantastic. Anyways, Microsoft announced it at E3 2019. There's a bunch of stuff that got announced at E3 2019. Um, they're, they're, they're apparently will have a physical disk drive, which is actually important to know because they've been talking about maybe not having that for a little while now. Can it's I interrupt a, real for a sec here? Bah. This is a really important comment. Clash in Cube India says, Linus got a great body. Thank you. Damn. Go ahead. You know, I did, I did, um, auto-completes for you and I on YouTube recently, just out of pure, cur pure curiosity. Yeah. And one of your top ones is topless. Really? Or shirtless or something, but effectively without a shirt on. That's uncomfortable. So there you go. Cool. Nobody should want to see my weird chest hair tuft. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a custom designed AMD processor uh -huh. using Zen 2 and Navi architectures. Sexy. From a pure processing perspective, it's four times more powerful. And while I was reading this, I expected it to say the original Xbox One, but it's the Xbox One X, which is, that's actually like, that's cool. Uh, capable of running games at 120 hertz frame rates. Now, I want to jump in for a second and say that that is a BS way to talk about the power of a game console. That's true. What game sure. are we talking about? Yeah. What At what texture de resolution? And this, at what this detail will, level? At what draw distance? And this is going to apply to the next note as well. Uh, Keynote says 8K compatibility for a brief second. Like, like yeah. Is it a picture? This <laughs> stuff makes me so mad. So there were people posting, again on the personal rig update one, that are like, PC gaming is a joke because even with the Titan RTX, it was still only running at 70 to 85 frames per second. Uh. As if it's that simple. It depends on you how much you cranked the, up the details. Do you remember uh, the console comparison video we did? Yeah. Like at the last ago. big launch? That was technically like the last big console launch. Uh, it's just been forever. You guys should do another one. Yeah, we totally should. I was also thinking of Just doing a video. a lot better. <laughs> doing a video called Console Marketing is Stupid. Where we basically... Okay, but PC marketing is really stupid too. I know, but console marketing... VR ready! Is... SLI ready! That's really stupid, and I don't have to accept that. <laughs> so the reason that marketing a console as 4K is that yeah. everything has trade-offs. I could run games at 4K on a six-year-old computer. What games? At what image quality settings? Pong. Exactly. I could run, I could, I could, whatever, the, this laptop. I could run a game at 4K, 120 frames per second. If I don't tell you what game it is and what it freaking looks like, that is not meaningful information. It's like, it's like having a multivariable algebra equation and 
you've only got one number and everything else. You've got variables X, Y, Z, A, B, C, gamma, freaking. <laughs> it's all over the place. It would be cool if they tried to maybe use a first party title. Like for Microsoft, pretty easy one to call out Halo. If they were like, Halo and more will run at 120. Sure. Or something. Um, Anyway, I'll let you finish. I'm going to let you finish, but... I'm going to let you finish. Uh, apparently, there's a quote saying, we're seeing over 40 times performance increase over the current generation. From the um, SSD. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah. To be... Yeah, I probably should have said that. Because um, the SSD is being used as virtual RAM, so it's going to share mm. a little bit. Uh, That's pretty and cool. And moving through worlds without waiting for screens to load is going to maybe happen sometimes with some games. That's so funny, too, because it's like... They're like, yeah... What an innovation, an SSD. Yeah. Meanwhile, we're like, hey. Yeah, you mean like when people were upgrading for freaking like, wow, burning crusade? <laughs> <laughs> and to be clear, people have been manually upgrading consoles with like, SSDs for a bit too. It's, it's. Honestly, like yeah. burning crusade days. That was kind of when people started upgrading and putting wow on an SSD so that they wouldn't load when they went between, like, come on. <laughs> um. Halo Infinite is confirmed as a launch title, but also to be clear, Halo Infinite's coming to PC and Xbox One X as well. Nice. Um, uh, da, da, da. It's possible that a new Elite controller, a Series 2... No, that's available for pre-order. That's coming. It's I'm excited. I love my Elite controller. Except when it broke. It's actually the only Xbox controller I've ever had break is my Elite controller. <laughs> that's kind of sad. How yeah, did it break? D-pad. So oh. I was playing CrossCode, and um, you use the D-pad to switch between the different elements. Okay, I'm starting soon. You said something about, sorry. Uh, you said something about keyboard and mouse versus controller. Should I keyboard and mouse it? It's, I think it, okay, I've never actually played it on keyboard and mouse. So the only experience I have with the keyboard and mouse controls, I didn't even realize we'll you could play it with keyboard sec. and mouse, because it's like a top-down sprite-based RPG, and I just grabbed a controller the first time I played it because I was like, duh, this is That's a controller That's usually game. how you do that, yeah. Yeah, so the only reason I even know you can control it with keyboard and mouse is because I was sitting on a plane and I kept like accidentally like aiming and firing at stuff and I didn't realize I was touching my touchpad with the back of my hand. So I kind of played around with it a little bit and it seems like particularly for quickly aiming, keyboard and mouse would be way better. Yeah, that makes sense. But That's kind of a rule. I really enjoyed like the laid back console experience of using a controller with it and like you're good enough with a controller that it probably shouldn't matter okay yeah like okay. i could do it i beat the game no problem there were challenging parts but like i could do it and it wasn't so did you ever play psychonauts no i uh i played a demo okay. and count so psychonauts towards the end is like it's like kind of unfair like, there's some really frustrating parts that are, like... I'd say amazing game design for a very skilled player. Like, like uh, you should be able to... Um, you should be able to beat it on the first try if you're really, really good, unless it's Dark Souls or something. Like, obviously, there are games that are designed to just kick your ass over and over and over again. Yeah. Um, but I'd say most games, if they're balanced correctly, if you're really, really good and you are mastering every new skill as it comes at you, you should be able to beat a level on the first try. Like Psychonauts, like really, really tough. So I'd say CrossCode is, is everything is beatable on the first try if you've been paying really close attention with a controller. There's no, I never felt like it was totally unfair. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fair. Um, current Xbox One accessories will work with Scarlet, which is cool, and apparently launching holiday 2020. So we're still quite a ways out. But yeah. Yes, Jim, this is bacon jerky. It's pretty legit, actually. But yeah, that's Scarlet. It's uh, not coming for a while, but it's very exciting. It's cool. We should maybe stay on the Microsoft path and jump down to the Xbox Game Pass for PC. Mm. Yeah. So yep. basically, uh, it, it's like a Steam-like thingy, but it's uh, subscription-based. It's 10 bucks a month or 5 bucks a month if you sign up during the beta, or $1 if you sign up now, but it's 10 bucks a month. Um, over 100 PC games available at launch, 
Uh, and it's not game streaming, so you still need to like download the game and play it off your computer and stuff. So here's some of the games. Um, here, I'll just uh, screen share with you guys. But doop doop doop, 333 results. Honestly, as with pretty much all of these things. So here, let's uh, filter by PC games. Sure. Hooray. 108 results. That's more like it. Yeah. Doop 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 doop. A lot of it is stuff I have never heard of. Forza! Sea of Thieves. Years of War! Years of War. Bunch of first party stuff. I think the most interesting things in here are going to be the first party games. Other than that, they're going to be mostly things that could have been very cheap if you caught, bought them on certain sales. Uh, or things that you're probably not going to be super interested in. Just because... Unless you're like equally interested in literally every game genre. Because there's a whole bunch of different game genres. Maybe this is a really good game. Is it wrong if I'm a little offended on, by someone trying to capitalize on Mr. Rogers? He was so against that kind of stuff. Is that supposed to be... Hello, neighbor? Come on. Wearing, like, a plaid sweater vest? Oh, it's a super creepy game, though. It's, it has nothing to do with... I hear ya. I see where you're going. You can't say hello, neighbor, without it Yeah. being Fred Rogers. I got you. But you're trying to, like... I, I've never played it, but I think you're trying to, like, break into that guy's house, and he's trying to, like, catch you. And then, yeah, I think he's holding a shovel because he attacks you or something. Broforce, I don't actually highly know. recommended. Broforce is amazing. Luke and I played through it a Broforce. while ago. Slay the Spire is great. Very good. I actually really enjoyed Lucky's Tale. Really? <laughs> yeah. Did you not? I don't think I played it very much. Oh, yeah. It was like it's like the one thing that I ever played on the Oculus. Except yeah. I didn't. I ran it on the Vive. <laughs> but I had bought an Oculus, so I don't even care. Yeah. So, because yeah. I bought one for LMG. Yeah. So I, I, I ran that on an unauthorized guys, system with no. It's interesting. Qualms. So, we called this so hard, and we got so much crap for it. Mostly me, I guess. Uh, not, not the crap. I mean the calling. Yeah, yeah. Um, but VR, you guys didn't even cover the new stuff. Did I'm, anyone complain? I'm yes, actually. Oh. I need to cover the quest. People are mad. But not the Rift S. Who cares about the Rift S? Yeah. There you go. Oof. Yeah, no one cared about the Rift S. People do care about the quest. The quest and seems to be doing pretty well. I'm really skeptical about it, but I am trying to maintain an open mind. I will I was I was going to come here and quest. say I understand, but I think you should cover it because I don't think Linus Tech Tips should lose the foothold of covering VR content. Because no. I think it will be really big at some time. At some point. Oh, hey. In time. Crosscode's in Game Pass. Hey. Hey. I already bought it, so whatever. Yeah, it's cheap. Yeah. I love that game so much. I wouldn't... It's not like... Oh, not going to play it again? It's hard. Not necessarily recommend it? It's not my... Oh, no, I'll recommend it. Okay. No problem. It's not my favorite game or anything, but if I'm being really honest, I think it's better than... A lot of the RPGs that I treasure having played as a kid. Oh. Like, I think it's objectively better. They've got some nostalgia glasses I, going I, on? I've, yeah. Like, I, I think if I'm being honest with myself. What about Breath of the Wild? Oh, Breath of the Wild is the greatest game of all time. Did you hear about Breath of the Wild too? I don't think I care. Oh. What was magic about Breath of the Wild was how utterly different it was. I had no temptation whatsoever to download the DLC. Oh, okay. I was just like, I was like, you know when that you... That was a great contained experience. Yeah, you know when you I'm finish happy with my meal. a really great book, yeah. and you close the last cover and you kind of sit there and you go, wow. They didn't produce season eight. I'm awesome. done. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of done. But I, man, I put so many hours into Breath of the Wild. Like, I just, I, uh... I, yeah, I, 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 I tried to tell myself, no, Final Fantasy VI is still my favorite game, but it's just not. Like, Breath of the Wild, Final Fantasy VI, I still I, I adore the characters. Um, but if I, you know, if I go back and I play it as an adult who knows my way through the game, there's actually not a lot that happens. Whereas, and you know what? I think the same is probably true for CrossCode. CrossCode can get a little grindy at times. Not that much actually happens. But what's great about it is I absolutely adore the characters. Uh, I and still there's I, a strong connection there. I went back and played some of Morrowind recently. Yeah. Because Morrowind's the game that I've always said is my favorite game. Um, and I think 
I think it still is, but but I don't think I would have the time or the patience now to play it the way you did. Yes, and to get out of it what you did. Yes, that makes sense. I don't think I could extract the experience I had with Morrowind anymore, which makes me really sad. But like, you done grown up? Yeah, to a certain degree. Because like, m the thing with Morrowind was I. The, the game starts, they give you this like package thing and you're supposed to go give it to someone mm -hmm. and it was worth something so I just sold it all the time. And that was what started the main quest. So I actually really thoroughly enjoyed the game for like months before I realized the game had a main quest. Yep. And I was like, oh god. And then this unlocked this whole other part of the game and it was, it was very interesting to wander and explore. Yep. And I don't have the now I'm like, I have time to play game. I must extract enjoyment out of game as yeah. much as possible, not just, I'm gonna go enjoy myself And that's what space. was so magical about Breath of the Wild to me. So most of the games that I've loved a lot have been because I love the characters. Like even some of the less popular Final Fantasies, um, I actually, no, most of them, the characters are kind of cliche. I really loved six. Um, <laughs> Uh, so it's because I love the characters. Um, and that was something that was a little bit different for Breath of the Wild because I loved the exploration. Not the, uh, I, like, the, the Link character is utterly uninteresting to me. Okay. There's not much to him. No. No. The Zelda character is, she might as well be Princess Peach. They are completely interchangeable to me. They're like um, a damsel in distress, but over the years, because uh, you know empowerment, they have become strong, independent women, and that's great. great. But that doesn't—that's still completely two-dimensional. And you know what? I'm sure that there's like supplementary manga or something, like sure. Yeah. yeah, some type of additional. But thing. some people only play the games, <laughs> and you you gotta you, you gotta. Well, give if you me, read the lore, you gotta give me something to work with here. Like Link yeah. is literally a silent protagonist, um, and and that's that's a storytelling mechanism. But but what was magical about Breath of the Wild was definitely ex the exploration. And what I yeah. usually love about games is the characters. So it's just it's hard for me to admit that my favorite game is not one that's about the characters, especially because I would never go and explore a world that I've already explored but I might go have a story retold to me about characters that I love. So for me, Breath of the Wild has no replay value, whereas I have played Final Fantasy VI through to the end at least half a dozen times, and, like to, and almost through probably 20 times. To reaffirm all of these points, yeah. it's on the same map. Oof. Yeah. Yeah, there's no it's way. It's like effectively, that. and you said I wouldn't buy a DLC. They were they in in one of their interviews, they basically said it would have made sense to be a DLC if DLCs were conventionally seen as like multitudes bigger than what they are. So it's an expansion pack. It's basically So we're back to that. Yeah. It well, okay, they're saying it's like the Majora's Mask. I never played Majora's Mask. Me neither actually. Okay. So I don't know how accurate this is but the Majora's Mask to Ocarina of Time, except it's on the same map. It's I don't, an expansion pack. I don't even know if, yeah. It's like a really big expansion pack. Yeah, but the expansion packs are really big. Yeah, Frozen uh, Throne is huge. What, 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 Frozen what's Throne, the, uh, Warcraft 3. Oh, uh, no, I was going further back than that. I was oh. actually going to use Warcraft 2. Ah. I'm trying to remember, don't, don't tell me, don't tell me. It's Warcraft 2, Tides of Darkness, Beyond the Dark Portal. Yeah. Uh, it's it's Beyond the Dark Portal. The Beyond the Dark Portal campaign is just as long as the Tides of Darkness campaign. If I remember correctly, Frozen Throne campaign is just as long. It's just as long. You're yeah. right. It is. And and it like completely overhauls and changes yeah. the game, but and it's like, the same sort of Supreme thing. Supreme Commander's expansion pack had a campaign that was just as long and added a race. Like, it's an expansion pack. Yeah. We just don't call them that anymore, I guess. Is someone dying? Oh, it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, time for. All right, so actually, was there anything else you really wanted to hit today? Because otherwise, I was going to do some super chats. Uh, we've. Uh, we should maybe talk about uh, LTX because there's a thingy oh, now. Oh right, there's like a ton of LTX news. Yeah. Um. Okay, VRRC car is going to include four cars, but isn't a race anymore. It's now a first-person view experience. So we're designing the tracks, and it'll include some fun little Easter eggs for you guys to find. Um. 
That's probably a good idea. We'll be playing Robo Recall, Vacation Simulator, and Windland 2 at the VR Experience booth. It will include eight HTC Vibes, a big step up from last year's three Vibes. Yeah. And because we couldn't find a sponsor for it, I have to buy them. Oof. Yeah. One right. of them is going to be my personal Vive because I, I don't want to like. I think you guys have buy mine more than I have still. To. I don't think so. I don't know where it is. Oh, I don't think we have it. Sure. I uh -oh. don't know. I'm not accusing. I don't okay. know. Okay. Either um, way, if it's there, it'll be there. I we guess. have new guests. Hey. Dare Bauer is going to be there. Oh, sweet. Roman's coming. Uh, Steve from Memory Express. And the Hardware Canucks team. So Eber and Dimitri are going to be there. Nice. Yeah. So we have. We are spending so much money. A lot. So and even much more, apparently. <laughs> um, BYOC seat selection is open. If you have a BYOC oh. ticket, head to dreamhack forward slash tickets forward slash LTX 19 to do that. Colton is slowly processing LTX volunteers one by one. If you signed up and followed the instructions, please stand by. And you can see below our main stage planned events. Oh, wow. Okay. Panel AMD versus Intel. Panel PC do's and don'ts. Industry insights with MSI. That's going to be great. We're going to have Cliff out. Oh, interesting. Yep. So, and I, I already sent him a lot of my questions. Like, maybe like, yeah, tell me who's hard to work with. <laughs> Should be good. <laughs> he's pretty sure he's going to get fired. <laughs> uh, we're going to be playing like a family feud sort of funny thing. Uh, and then we've got a panel, running a YouTube business, the early years. That should be an interesting one. Huh. Now, I'm not the only one on all these panels. We're actually going to be leaning on some of our creators um, to come up and help us with these. Um, Twitter slash float playing Q&A with LMG part one and two is at uh, 1130 on the second day. Uh, World of Warships tournament with Linus. Never played the game, so that'll be interesting. Sweet. Apparently I get it, I get like a stacked like special ship that's like uh, LTT colored and stuff. What? So like people, so I, because I don't know how to play the game, I have kind of an advantage. So I don't know, it nice, might be interesting. Nice, nice. Uh, PC versus Mac panel, uh, budget versus performance panel, award ceremony, and a farewell. Uh, MSI is apparently sending us 20 little lucky dragons to sell and build <laughs> on the floor plan. Oh my goodness, we're showing the floor plan! Look at all the updates today. Hold on, Those BYOC seats. Oh, Yeah, dang. we expanded it. Um, Heck yeah. Okay, so here's what we're looking. Oh my goodness. This I, is a little small. I can't read all this stuff. It's gigantic though. So this is 590 BYOC seats. This is PC free play where the systems are already there. Uh, VIP slash staff slash crew BYOC. So that's where you'll be, Luke. Okay. Um, here's the stream zone. So this is all kind of like dream hacky things. Then we've got the stage. Then over here, you've got LTX, and I'm having a hard time reading. So the VIP staff crew, BYC, that's float plane is going to be in there as well? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then <laughs> over here is the Indie Zone. I believe this is the case toss. Um, I can't read any of this stuff, but maybe it's, I don't know. It's super awesome. Oh, yes. It's so this is zone. a problem. Um, Free Geek. Huh? is uh, actually kind of in trouble. Um, so we just wanted to take a moment to shout them out big time for being such an amazing supporter of LTX. Um, without them, we wouldn't have been able to get the hundreds of dead motherboards to use as the Motherboard House of Cards booth. They provided 20 plus cases to throw at the infamous case toss. They sourced 20 computers for us to use in the PC build workshop, like dead components that people can learn to assemble. Yeah. Sent us a number of unique motherboards for the guess that motherboard booth. Um, a lot of this would have been difficult, if not impossible to do without them. So Free Geek is a Vancouver based nonprofit community organization that reuses and recycles donated electronics they offer education and job skills training and provide free or low-cost computers to the public. They've been an integral part of the event, and they're in a bit of a tough spot right now um, because recycling rates are falling. And um, you know what? Not too much details, but we'd really appreciate your guys' help to help them keep their doors open. It, what they do is kind of important, so it's uh, freegeekvancouver.org where you can go to learn how you can contribute because... Uh, you know, everything from Scrapyard Wars yeah. to Retro Mods to our Sleeper PC series, like, they have hooked us up in ways that are, like, not money, but just PC community relationship ways. And like, this, this is the kind of stuff you want 
in the PC community because yes. if you think back to your current or maybe younger self, depending on where you're at, yeah. uh, there's a point in time where if you're really into PCs, these types of outlets is what you need to lean on. Maybe the only way that you could afford one. Yeah, to be completely honest. So, so inspiring new young or or. Uh, less financially fortunate minds yep. in our space is how is is keeping That's how these doors it grows. open. Yeah. All right. So guys, go check it out. That's freegeekvancouver.org, and uh, we should go ahead and uh, call it some super chats. Yeah. Amari says, "Finally, YouTube Premium got sick of ads. Good stuff. And thank you for the two dollars." Um, Jamaican, you too. Presumably, Logan, Frozen Sniper, you guys too. Sup, Spencer. Uh, Connor says, "What were you doing with Gavin?" A uh, couple of really cool does, things. Does, so Gavin wait, from does Slow Mo Plane guys know? I is think here. Full Plane knows what you were doing. With no, Gavin. they don't. That video is not up yet. Oh. So no. uh, we did a couple of things. We determined once and for all whether 240 hertz monitors have an advantage over 60 hertz for gamers. Oh. Yeah. And in a bunch of really interesting ways. Cool. So does it affect reaction time? Does it affect your kill rate? Does it affect the way that you aim? So we used slow motion, 1,000 frame per second footage to watch how a gamer reacts at 60 hertz versus 240 hertz. Did you watch Ed? We did. Okay, good. Wow. He's a lot better at 240 hertz. But I won't spoil anything else about it because the findings with me and Gavin were also interesting, but in completely different ways. Yeah. I was, I was, I was hoping you were doing a spectrum, but if you weren't doing a spectrum, I was hoping it was Ed. We were. Yeah. So we had Ed at the top, at the top end. We had Gavin as more of like a casual, and then we had me as sort of like, I used to be okay, I guess. You're good at games. My aim is fantastic, actually. My spread was pretty close to Ed's. Wow. But... Um, what game? My, my kill time was much higher. Uh, we used CSGO with an auto snipe. Okay. Uh, and then we had, a, we had a target basically at an, at an undetermined an auto snipe. time. Uh, well, the reason for the auto snipe was we wanted to give the... Um, if you got a headshot, you took him down in one... We told everyone to go for headshots. But if you hit a body shot, we wanted it to be possible to take down the target in the time that you had while they ran across the okay. hallway. Okay. Um, so you basically had to, you had a pixel that you had to point at, and then you didn't know when it was going to come, and you had to take him out as fast as you could as he ran across. So, interesting. Very yeah, interesting. Really, really cool test. And then uh, what we did with the knowledge that we gained from working with Gavin was we produced a second video the next day determining once and for all whether wireless mice are Ooh. slower. So we devised a mechanism to hit a mouse, complete a circuit, light up a light to show us the exact moment that they make contact, and then we were able to use one millisecond frames at 1,000 frames per second to see how long it takes the, um, the crosshair on the monitor behind it to start to move. So we, were, we weren't able to actually determine down to one millisecond which mouse was faster because we don't have the equipment to measure that. We can't intercept the signal from the mouse. But we were able to tell if any monitor on the market could possibly give you the feedback yeah. fast enough yeah. that you could detect a difference. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be a really, really interesting video. Um, so that's what I was doing with Gavin. Commissioner says, if the 64 core Threadripper was cheap, not sure where you're going with that, because it sure as heck won't be. Uh, sup, Jason, Will Briggs, Westerly, uh, Derek. YouTube Premium gives free super chats. I think that's what like most of this is. Zach says, put it towards some tooling for the mill. Uh, oh, man, that workshop is going to be freaking awesome. C Bart, hashtag save channel super fun, 20 bucks. If only it were that. If, if uh, only it was what? 20 bucks. You know what's really funny? is it is not impossible that Channel Superfund could end up resurrected as part of this diversification push. We'll see. It's not dead. It's just on you wanna, support. You want to know a, a, fun, a fun little fact here? Yeah. Remember the pigeon? The pigeon? Was it? I think it's called a pigeon. Um, Apple pigeon console. Pippin. Oh, Pippin. the Pippin. Pippin. Yeah, yeah, the at mark. It's, at, uh, it's probably paid for itself by now. Has it? It's like three million views or something. Really? Yeah. How much did we pay for that stupid thing again? I think it was five hundred bucks. Oh. 
<laughs> oh, can literally buy like a brand new Xbox One X for what we paid for it. The worst console ever. And like a game and some controllers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, three million views. Hell yeah. What's up, Nick? You guys talking about the merch story yet? Oh, oh, he wants us to talk merch about the merch. Star. So yeah. this, this is our hot item right now. This hoodie is finally for sale. Yeah. Did you get one yet? Okay. Uh, oh, really? Uh, Ouch. Nick is my savior because my luggage was lost. You lost it? No, I did not. No. An airline did. <laughs> <laughs> An airline did. A hundred percent. Okay. And my sweater was in there, but Nick, Nick swooped in and got me another one. All right, so this is the one. He did. <laughs> but either way. This is the one that's like the hot seller on the store right now. Yeah. It's LTTstore.com. It's got like a little... Oh, it's got a little logo here. It's got the phone pocket on this side that holds even really big phones. This is an early prototype. So actually, the um, we had enlarged the phone pocket after this one because it didn't really fit very well. It was like hard to get it in and out. Um, also, this one, <laughs> see how yours goes a little bit lower? We made it about an inch longer because this is an early one because it was always riding up on me like that. I also have a rather tall torso, and it fits on me perfectly fine. I know yeah. some people uh, ask about how different fitting things work, so uh, yeah. We changed the zipper to YKK instead of whatever this is. That's that's good. Yeah, that's, so we, that's we made some quality and some wearability improvements. That's why these projects take so long, because you're sending feedback, you're waiting for new samples, you're sending more feedback, you're waiting for new samples. If it was just as simple as like getting a shirt printed, this merch stuff would have paid for itself ages ago. As it is, we're, okay, so we're making money on every item we sell, but we're deep in the red in terms of the total investment that we put yeah. in, but honestly, I'm so much happier like wearing our stuff now. Oh, okay, now. as, like, an, as so an outside good. party, the, the stuff I was most upset about losing in that, like, okay, one random little tidbit, I lost literally every single pair of bottoms that I own, except for these shorts that I'm wearing in that luggage. So wow, I don't, so don't have very many bottoms. It's gonna take you a long time to get free bottoms to replace those bottoms because I know you won't pay That's for them. That's why I only had that many. I know. It's because th those me, are the same jeans I've had for like seven uh, years. I believe you. <laughs> um, <laughs> but okay, as an outside source, the shirts are insanely comfortable. Yeah. The Constellation one is actually my like favorite shirt, which is also gone. It's now. Out of stock right now. Um, We're working on getting more. Uh, the problem is we can't get that color of shirt. And so we're working on an overseas source, um, but unless it meets the standard of the ones that we are using now, we are just, we'd rather be completely out of stock and not sell anything than compromise anymore. I'm just tired of it. And it's insane. I'm just going to step in again, still outside source. Your shirts are 20 bucks. Yeah, they're not that bad. Basically, no influencer shirts are 20 bucks right now. $20 a shirt is the like, five to ten years ago pricing for most of this kind of stuff, which is pretty awesome. The shirts feel great, the printing's great, the sweaters are thin, yep. which is usually bad, but it's not. No, They're it's because it's, like it's like a, a, a French terry. Yeah. Like it's not like a cheap thin. It's I uh, haven't had a sweater like this before. So Every thin sweater that I've had sucked. This one's fantastic. I slept with it over my face when nice. I didn't have a, another option while I was in Taiwan. It was great. And then it's gone, but, and I was really sad, and I got a new one. We're trying to, we're trying to keep the pricing reasonable. That's like yeah. one of the big 60 things. bucks for a sweater. Again, it's sweaters cheap, are kind of expensive. But it takes us a long time to make this stuff. So yeah, yeah it is what it is. Jeez, Luke, go buy some pants. Well, I have to now, OK? So I will. Maybe Whatever. we'll start. Uh, Lloyd really wants to do joggers, so joggers would be dope. I I don't really like them though. So my my uh. new thing my new thing with the merch actually I, I I listened to a talk from Chris Jenner of all people. Um, you know what? You can say what you want about the content, but you have to respect the business savvy. Uh, and she was like, "Look, focus. Focus on what you actually are passionate about." And it's a lot harder to screw up. And so I'm going, you know, so I, I, so I got back to the office and I canceled the joggers project because <laughs> okay. I don't care about them. Okay. And I was like, nope, we're going to do stuff that like I care about a lot. So the underwear that's coming, yeah, it's really nice. Okay, good. Because I lost also a very high percentage of my underwear. The underwear, the underwear. <laughs> Fairly soon, literally my entire wardrobe is just going to be LTT stuff. The underwear which is Which I'm sweet. okay with. <laughs> It's like really nice. Yeah, that's um, awesome. Anyway, uh, Connor says, can you recommend a battery pack that can power a USB-C powered laptop? I don't know, anything from like 
like anchor stuff anchor. is pretty good. Yeah, anchor. just go anchor, I guess. Yep. Um, weekend Gaming Nerds, wow, I'm, we're getting so many free super chats. Guys, thank you. Uh, Twigs, Darkstalker, Azaril, Lee Gamer, uh, Matt, Aaron, also, Marcos. Th this is the new CPU shirt, and it's super cool. Yeah. I like that I it like doesn't really look like tech. Yeah, but if you but if you, you can know. also identify it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Distro Tube. This show is cool. Have you guys ever considered switching to new li new slash Linux? Find out Gnu. more about free software software freedom and the new project at new.org. Oh, thank you. Sweet. We had never heard of that. <laughs> Let me get right on that for our Adobe Premiere editing workflow. <laughs> well. I'm not. Uh, I'm not trying to be a hater. We use Linux where it makes sense, like yeah. our storage servers, <clears throat> for example. Float plane. All of Luke's float plane crap runs yeah. on Linux. Yeah. But we're not ready to advocate switching to Linux for like a media production environment. It's not. It's not a thing yet. And uh, before you send another super chat, which I appreciate by the way, about DaVinci Resolve. Yes, we're aware of it, but it doesn't do everything. <laughs> um, Michael, Freddie. From Lazar, Lachlan, Danny, um, Arash, thank you very much. Uh, Midland says, good evening, guys. Wondering if there's a way to clone an internal SSD to an internal software RAID 1 SSD array. That is a tremendous question, and I have actually tried to figure out how to do it. I don't know why. With the Intel RAID, when you create it, you can't just say, hey, all of that, that one drive, that one's good. All of that to the other one, too. You have to clear them when you create it. And it seems like the kind of thing that I do know that there are, um, like there are values that you, that you write when you create a RAID that kind of tie the two together. It just seems like the kind of thing that someone over the last couple of decades might have engineered a solution to by now. Yeah. Uh, as far as I'm aware, um, I, I don't know of a way to do it. I'm sorry. Rehan uh, says, the search on float plane is there, but doesn't seem to be effective. Yeah, I know. They're working on it. Yep. Um, There's actually like a fix for it, but it's just not up yet. Uh, Lorenz, sorry, don't think about quitting. I really miss you lately on the channel. Don't worry, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going anywhere. Uh, QWERTY, to be honest, I love all the other staff, but if you're done, I am too. <laughs> I like having the variety, but I'm here for you. Well, I, I appreciate that. But also, I appreciate the support for the rest of the staff because they're awesome. Um, Niche requests podcasts. Interesting. Ben Burrell says, Water cool the new Mac Pro. We're going to create our own new this Mac Pro. This is a podcast. Yeah, this is a podcast, by the way. We already have a podcast. Uh, Jax, well, said story driven podcasts. No, uh, what? Uh, like Reply All. Uh, watching oh. your rig upgrade. Thunderbolt config. Is it still in the closet? Okay. So I had to rip the Gigabyte board back out that night and put my old board back in because I don't have a Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 2 adapter. <laughs> So really sad story, especially because Brandon and I stayed late to finish that video. Oh, no. So I ended up reusing that motherboard in a, you know what, I won't spoil it, but there's more videos coming up. That narrative is far from done. Uh, Nabil says, hey, Linus, you're paying too much attention to the feedback. Great to have the feedback, but do what you like, man. We enjoy seeing you stuff. Do the stuff you enjoy. So that's good. That's important. But also, I do need to take feedback because it does matter, too. It's just like filtering it. That's the key. Uh, Dave, just because I want to one-up a rash, sends $24.99. Oh, thanks, Dave. Uh, Luke needs a chair that says that float plane. He does. Oh, yeah. That'd be cool. What a terrific point. Um, okay. And in, like, blue. Jesus Franco says, uh, YouTube gave me this, so here you go. Game Breaker says, yo, Linus, what did I miss? I only joined, like, a minute ago. Are you for real, bro? <laughs> we're just going, we're going to recap the whole, the whole land show. <laughs> you know what? You can't blame a guy for trying. <laughs> you got to respect that. At least, at least he took a shot. You got to try things. Yeah, but yeah, you know what? Yeah, yeah shoot for the moon, right? Because <laughs> you if miss. You, if you like... miss, then it might come down on an old lady somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks, you and I. Uh, Jake says, would love a vlog channel. Nope, I'm out, I'm done. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, man. I actually have a pretty good vlog channel idea. I don't have time to do it right now, though, but it's like, it's pretty different. It's pretty different. Um, 
Oh, wow. I don't know if I can get through all these. Whenever we do Super Chats, like earlier in the show, and people are like, oh, wow, they're actually going to remember Super Chats today, we get a bunch of them, and then we can't finish them. I would strongly recommend, if you guys want to like do Super Chats, do them earlier in the show, because then we'll get to those ones first. If we, <laughs> when we don't. Uh, Ice Xero says, what do you think about this setup? An Epic 7401P with 64 gigs of DDR4 ECC, 5 GTX 1080s, and a 4x480 gig SSD on an MZ31 AR0 motherboard. Sounds like a, like a machine learning setup or something. That's you gotta be careful. Weird config. What you're inviting is config feedback from everyone. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, right. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't do that. Uh, go post on the new builds section of the forum. Yes. Thank you, Luke. Good call. No problem. Um, I do this stuff sometimes. Okay. All right. But up, but down, down. Make sure. Okay. Yeah, and we're done. Ah. Bye, guys. Bye. See you again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. See ya. Whoops. There we go. I'm so upset that it's still not up. So I am Blur says I have two friends that are 4XL and can't ever find YouTube merch that fits. I think right now we only go up to 3XL, guys. Um. Man, we could we could try, but what I'll say is that even 3XL, um, a lot of the merch that we source is like, uh, like like the the really nice shirts that we're talking about, how great they are, are not available in that size. So even our 3XL, I believe, is a different shirt. Oh really? Yeah. All right. Bye for real.